first at four, caught on camera. Investigators say a Michigan State trooper ordered his canine companion to break several department rules. We've got the story behind this video. Relaxing the restrictions, today is the day when restaurants can welcome more customers into their dining rooms. What you should know before you go. And we're seeing sunshine in downtown Detroit, and we're headed towards 60 degrees. Might take a while to get there, but we do have your forecast, and Jimmy Edmonds is here. We're here at Fox Run Senior Living Facility in Novi, where a resident and former Marine got the surprise of his life. I'll tell you about this great honor and his reaction next on First at Four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the FBI's man on the inside testified about his time with the men charged in the alleged plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Known only as Dan, the informant was not shown in court to protect himself and his family. He told the judge the three men charged, Pete Mizuko, Joseph Morrison, and Paul Bellar, helped collaborate with other extremists on a plan to storm the Capitol. Dan said he initially joined the group for the firearms training, but went to police when more violent rhetoric started being used. Well, from the, the post that I initially seen on Facebook was this was supposed to be for a training. Uh, given the text that was just being put out there, this was not training. This is wanting to, to do violence. Uh, so I, I felt that was a threat to law enforcement. Probably towards the end of our, our stay on wire is when politicians were being talked about. Good. Um, just finding the address of the governor. This is the third day of a hearing to determine if the case against these men will go to trial. We'll have more testimony tonight at 5. Michigan State Police Trooper is being charged with assault for what happened during an arrest. Newly released video shows him ordering his police dog to continue attacking a man for four minutes. Stay on! Don't move! Please, sir, he's on my face! I don't care! I'm not moving, sir! State police say Trooper Parker Surbrook stopped a driver that was believed to be armed in Lansing back in November. The suspect took off, eventually crashing into a tree. When the trooper arrived, video shows him sending his canine to take down the suspect, then keep the dog on that man as he pleaded for help. Surbrook has been suspended without pay and was arraigned on the charges today. Today marks another turning point in Michigan's battle against the coronavirus with more restrictions being relaxed. First, the state found nearly 1,500 people have contracted the virus in the past 24 hours. We've also seen an additional 10 deaths connected to the pandemic. Even as rules are relaxed, Governor Whitmer reminds us to observe safety protocols like mask wearing, social distancing, and hand washing. Also, if you think you're sick, stay home. As long as you're careful, casinos are now open to 30% capacity. Retailers and indoor entertainment venues are open to 50%. Another big change involves restaurants. Many have been hit so hard during this crisis. Starting today, they're able to serve up to 50% capacity, up to 100 people. They also face limits on spacing and how many people can sit at each table. New at 5, we're going to check in with some local owners and ask, does this change really help them stay in business? What are the challenges they're still facing? Business editor Rod Maloney working that story, his full report when you join us at 5. Michigan's bishops have entered a moral debate over the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The state's Catholic leadership released a letter saying it is concerned because cells from an aborted baby were used in the vaccine's research and development. They'd prefer Catholics use the Pfizer or Moderna versions, but they say if you don't have a choice and a delay in vaccination is risky to your health, it would be permissible to receive a shot from Johnson & Johnson. This is a debate with a lot of nuance. We'll answer more questions you might have on Local 4 News at 6. Oh, we're heading into the weekend, and we all want to know when will things warm up so we can head outdoors. Andrew Humphrey in for Ben. Hey, Andrew. Hey there, Karen. Good to see you as always on your Friday afternoon. We have, we have beautiful sunshine out there. Sure, it is chilly. It'll be seasonably chilly for the weekend. And wait till you see the seven-day forecast in a few minutes. First, we've got abundant sunshine, 36 degrees. Still need those jackets and coats heading out in Port Huron with 36 there. 38 for our friends around Pontiac and also Lake Angeles. While it's 40 degrees over at City Airport, 42 in Adrian. Look at that beautiful skyline, always beautiful right here in downtown Detroit. We got the beautiful Detroit River as well with 41 degrees right now over at Metro Airport. It feels 
like it's around freezing if your skin is not protected. So don't forget your hat, your scarf, your gloves, just to stay extra warm and always remember your masks so everyone in the family can stay healthy. Now it does get colder tonight. Temperatures keep falling through the 30s, even into the 20s after you join us tonight at 11 o'clock. How low do temperatures go overnight? Any more sunshine for Saturday and Sunday? That and those higher temperatures, Karen, in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. The U.S. Senate is inching toward a vote on the newest COVID relief plan, but that progress comes after some overnight drama. Well, if you consider the public reading of a 628 page document high drama, here's how it finally ended after 2 a.m. The Senate has adjourned until 9 a.m. this morning. In this Senate clerk spent 10 hours and 44 next. minutes reading the entire COVID relief bill into the record. The Wisconsin Republican Ron Johnson today, says he wanted Americans to hear the bill, Friday but it's something that almost never happens. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom. Kim, where do things stand now? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. The Senate is considering amendments to the bill that's worth around $1.9 trillion. Some Republicans are vowing to draw this out as long as possible, and we've already seen action on the minimum wage. It looks like a last minute, last ditch effort to raise the minimum wage to $15, though, has failed. Senator Bernie Sanders tried to add an amendment to the relief bill, even though the Senate parliamentarian has said that is against the rules. The vote to kill the, the amendment was 58 to 42 against, with eight Democrats joining Republicans. Senators will have to wade through the entire amendment process before a final vote can be taken. Today's debate shows neither side is giving any ground. This isn't a pandemic rescue package. It's a parade of left-wing pet projects that are ramming through. They're ramming through during a pandemic. Those same ideas which they supported when Trump was president and McConnell was majority leader are a liberal wish list. Same ideas. Who the heck are they kidding? They have no good answer. Well, it's not clear how long the amendment process will take. Assuming the bill gets out of the Senate, it will have to go back to the House for final approval there. We'll keep you posted with another update from Washington when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. All right, I want you to take a look at this Navy ship. It's going to have a very personal connection to an American hero that lives right here in Metro Detroit. His story sounds something like Steven Spielberg or Clint Eastwood might turn into a movie someday. But for now, this real life military honor is in the works. Our Jamie Edmonds spoke with a veteran of the Korean War about his bravery and this big boat. 90 year old Robert Semenak remembers his time with the Marines in the Korean War like it was yesterday. From west to east, U.S., British, and South Korean troops are pursuing the disintegrating communist forces. If we could serve in any way, we would. Robert Semenak was the second youngest of four boys born on the west side of Detroit. All of them served their country. I was just very fortunate to be able to, to serve. Simonak enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1951. After training, he was shipped to Korea to serve as a rifleman and as a radio man. Private First Class Simonak was just 22 years old in April 1952 when he was asked to do a morning patrol north of Seoul and his squad was ambushed by Chinese troops. Started firing at us and, and killed the guy immediately behind me and I was shot. He was wounded already when he saw a grenade jumped on it to save his fellow Marines. I immediately had one other grenade that I managed to kick away and came back to that one and knew exactly that I don't have any time left. And so I dropped on it. For his valor, President Eisenhower awarded him the Medal of Honor at the White House. He says his grandmother may have had a better time than he did. Mr. Eisenhower liked talking to my grandmother, who was very German, didn't know English too well. and. So he was pleased to talk German with my grandmother. And I think he talked with her more than me, <laughs> which was fine. She was just so pleased. Upon returning home, Semenek met his wife, raised their daughter. He now lives at a senior living community in Novi. He recently got the news he will have a U.S. Navy ship named in his honor. Yes, I found that out very currently. And uh, I just can't believe it. The USS Robert E. Simonac has been ordered and will be completed in 2024. It will perform a variety of missions, including launching helicopters, small boats, and assist in troop transportation. It's how Simonac got to Korea all those years ago. He can't believe a ship will bear his name for years to come.
He says serving his country was his greatest honor. I, I felt very worthwhile about my activity in Korea. In Novi, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. Goodness, thank you so much for your service. Mr. Simonek, by the way, went to MSU. He graduated from Wayne State and then worked as an accountant. He says to this day, he's a huge Spartan fan. He watched last night's basketball game. He says he loves MSU, but it's nice when the Wolverines are good too. Well, we have one sports note. First at four, the Detroit Pistons and Blake Griffin have agreed to part ways. A buyout is in the works. Griffin's trade to the Pistons in 2018 was seen as controversial due to his massive contract. But in his first full season, Griffin averaged 25 points and led the team to the playoffs in 2019. Injuries, as you know, forced Griffin to miss parts of the last two seasons. Griffin can sign now with any team he wants after he clears waivers. Still ahead first of four, a robocall alert. This could be one drawback once the pandemic is over. Also want to spice up your look? Talk about the surprising inspiration behind this new makeup collection. But first, the Pope is making history. He's braving COVID and security concerns to bring a message to the Middle East. That's next.